Welcome to Electric Dreams, your regular podcast about electric vehicles, sustainable tech and news. It's brought to you by the Yorkshire EV Club and you can contact us on EV Yorkshire on Twitter or YorkshireEVClub at gmail.com or obviously on the obligatory Facebook group which is just search for Yorkshire EV Club. Okay folks, this is episode one, it's a brand new podcast. Uh, my name is Darren Sant, I'm a Nissan Leaf driver, been driving Nissan Leaf since 2016 and I've been interested in EVs for a lot longer than that really. You can catch me on Twitter as Whole Leaf Guy. I'm very active on there. And um, I also run the Yorkshire EV Club. Um, I live in Hull, and but we've got people from all over Yorkshire in there. And some people who aren't even in Yorkshire at all. I'm joined today in, in this episode, episode number one, by my friend John. Hello. Hello, Darren. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself, John? Uh, yes, I can do. Um, I am... Um, oof. I, 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 it's difficult to say really I'm not an EV driver for my sins um, I, I, I wish I was um, but I'm one of these people who I, I'm looking from. I'm looking through the outside at the moment I, I love what's going on however just for me because it, I do the occasional very long drive I've got lots of family that live at the complete opposite end of the country um, I would like to be able to do an entire journey uh, in one go without stopping and at the moment just I mean rightly or wrongly I'm, I'm a bit scared to dive into the whole EV thing just because that's what I want to do I think the minute I can do 250 miles in one go without emptying my wallet and my bank account I'll, I'll be straight in there but I, I'm just a bit scared to jump in at the minute but I'm, I'm well into the whole scene to be honest I follow it you know I look at it read about it listen to all the podcasts hello you're listening to one right now uh, but yeah it's just um, I, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the edge waiting to jump in just a bit scared and I think um, John finds himself in probably the same position that a lot of people are at the moment and maybe you're listening to this I mean, by all means, drop us a line. Like I say, catch me on Twitter, Hull at Hull Leaf Guy. Tell us about your experiences. Are you looking to buy an EV? Do you have a hybrid? Do you have uh, a diesel car that's on its last legs and you're looking to make the plunge? You know, what's your thoughts? What do you want to know from future podcasts? We want to answer all these questions, but we want to do it in an informative, approachable way, really, and that's, that's what we're going to be about. Okay, so I thought I'd kick off with a bit of news, really. I, I'm, we're recording this. Uh, I, I won't give you a date. I didn't need to know a date. But basically, we're recording this in July 2019. And at the time we're recording, um, all of the EV news sites are just picking up on the release of the new MG ZS EV. Uh, and as I told a friend the other week, I know nothing about the car. haven't seen any footage, seen nothing until this week. Uh, and this week... Um, any of you that are listening that are into EVs will, will be aware of the uh, the prominent YouTubers James and Kate. And um, James, uh, of James and Kate fame, has just done a live stream showing the MG. And I saw this yesterday and you know what? It's a really great looking car. It's not bad, is it? I saw it for the first time about oof, about 20 minutes ago, in all honesty. Um, but yes, I, I heard about it uh, uh, yesterday evening. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. MG is, uh, is one of these brands that they kind of um, disappeared, didn't they, when, uh, when Rover went bankrupt, didn't they? Or they disappeared for whatever reason. Um, and all of a sudden, they're, they're kind of back again. Um, reappeared, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much um, you've, you've been picking up at MG. I think you just said you didn't know a great deal, but I know that it, they uh, they disappeared when when Rover kind of went bankrupt, and then um, and uh, a Chinese motor company bought the plant, I believe, where they were being built. But long story cut short, MG as a brand has been knocking out some new cars by these uh, new owners. I think it's S A I C Motor is what I've got written down here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've I've been familiar with MGs from the touring cars because for my sins, I do like watching a, a few uh, motor races and that kind of thing. But the MGs, the modern MGs, in my opinion, in my eyes, they look, you know, they they give a big nod to the original MG. So it's not yeah. like someone's just bought a name and stuck it on a Chinese car. They look like pretty decent cars, in all honesty. Definitely, and I, it, as I say, it wasn't really on my radar. But a lot, I was at a, an EV. Meet really for the Yorkshire V Club. There's another plug for you, and um, and one or two people were saying they're quite excited. I'm like, yeah. And then now I've seen this video, I see why it's it's a great looking car. Um, they're talking about uh, people throw different cycles, and this isn't really going to be a news podcast. But 
Um, the range I've heard thus far is about 170 miles, um, and it, which, which didn't blow me away, to be honest with you. But when I heard the price point, they're, sp- they're apparently going to be pricing it really aggressively. And I've heard, you know, obviously there's going to be different trim levels, but low 20s. It's not bad, is it? No, for, an for EV, a brand new EV, that could be a game changer. It's a it's a great looking car. It's uh, a little bit smaller than the Qashqai, to quote uh, James or James and Kate, who was stood next to one yesterday. So <laughs> I'll take his opinion on that. <laughs> um, and it looks the, the, the charging f- the grill at the front. You wouldn't peg it for an EV. No, I mean that, 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 I think that was that was his whole point when when you showed me the video earlier on. Is that yeah, it, it looks just looks like a car and and. Maybe I'm digressing slightly, but I think uh, um, for someone who's been looking at EVs from the outside for quite a while, the um, I mean the original Nissan Leaf it's it's a uh, um, it's a very acquired taste. You either love it or you don't understand it. I'm not going to say you hate it because no one hates a car. I drive a Leaf. I'm on my second Leaf. As a chap at work calls it a plastic frog, <laughs> and I'm sad. I said, you know what? It's not the prettiest car in the world. But it goes like stink. Yeah, but I mean that, that, that's the whole point. In that the early EV cars, back at the time when EVs were were being launched, it's people had to you, they had to advertise the fact that, that it was an EV, and how else would you do it by making it look different? But now people know what electric cars are. What well, you don't necessarily need to make it look different in order for it to be different, and that's what this MG does perfectly. In that it looks like what, what the average Joe would call. A car, and I, I think that's brilliant. And I think an early example of that is um, is obviously the big people screaming at me now. Um, the Zoe's, the Renault Zoe. My wife drives a, a 2013 Zoe. She absolutely adores that car. It drives beautifully. Mm. It's easy, like a go kart. Stop, start, gear shift, everything. But if you had one behind you and you didn't know and you weren't looking too closely, you'd think, it's, "Hang on, that's a Clio." I know it's based on the Clio. But it's so yeah. conventional. Well, exactly. Ap- apart from the, um, the the quite funky lights that are on the back of it, they're, they're not over the top. It, you think, oh, that's just a posh Renault. But it's a car. And, and again, that's, like I say, that's exactly what the MG does and also the, the Renault Zoe to an extent as well, in that it just looks like a car. And I think that's, that's a threshold that, that um, I think manufacturers are starting to realise that it's, 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 you're going to have to cross it at some point because you can't make all cars look like they're from, no. I don't know, a 50s view of the, uh, the 2030s. If you, you know want to appeal I mean. to the mass market, then you've got to give people something that's relatively conventional. There'll, yeah. be, there'll be one guy looking at that car who thinks, you know what? I don't care what it looks like. I just want to get the family in. As long as it doesn't look too weird, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, and the car definitely looks big enough to be able to do that. It's it's a nice piece of work. Given the cost of it, you know, apparently it's going to have a single electric motor to drive the front wheels, producing 148 bhp and 350 newton metres of torque, which is enough. I'll be honest, that bit's all Chinese to me, but, you know... (laughs) <laughs> it's a decent amount of talk. Sounds impressive. Um, but put, put it this way, it's going to be able to do 0 to 31. I don't know why it's 31, by the way. <laughs> Who wrote these stats? I do not know. But 0 to 31 what, in 3.1 seconds. Doesn't really matter, does it? Does it work? No. Does it drive? Yeah. <laughs> but that is a pretty nifty car. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm quite shallow. I, I, I like the look of it. And uh, I, am, I, I never claim to be a massive uh, motor enthusiast. However, I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate these things. And as a driver, rather than a driving fanatic, I think that's, 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 that's where people like me are starting to get brought in, I think, in that I, I, want yeah. a, I want a car. I don't want to look at the car or necessarily talk about a car all day. Ironic being that that's what we're doing now. But you, you know what I mean? It's, it's the practical use. Can I use it Monday to Friday? But for those with the family as well, I mean, the boot looks at 483 uh, litres in the boot. I mean, I'm, you know, the old, the early Nissan Leafs, they had a, a ruddy big inverter across the back of the boot, which cut down the boot space. But the Leaf actually is known as one of the bigger boot space EVs. And some of them, like, uh, take for example, the BMW i3, mm. very much, a, again, a Marmite car. Some people don't like it. Some people do. That's got a tiny little boot, you know. It has. I, th- I think it's also made smaller as well. You can get the... Um, uh, oh, do you know what? I- I'm speaking of that. It's completely lost. You can put your own little petrol motor in the back, can't you? Oh, what yeah. They call it? Some of them are the Rex range extender. Yeah. That's right, yeah. And you imagine having one of those in your boot. You've got you've got an even smaller boot than uh, than originally. But, um, but yeah, anyway, I- I'm digressing slightly. But, yes, it's... But um, on the whole, I think great. that's going to be an exciting car it's going to be game chain that is going to definitely get more electric cars on the road uh, 
Yes, absolutely. And the, uh, again, I, I'm banging on about it all the time, but the fact that it looks like a car and nothing more but nothing less either. The MG ZS looks absolutely great. Um, yeah, do you know what? It's another one to look at, I think, for me. Give yeah. it another couple of years, I may well own one. Who knows? Watch this space. Definitely. <laughs> So from from the MG really to a car that I'm a little bit less certain of is um, the new Mini hatchback. Uh, so the Mini are going to have a pure EV, uh, WLTP range of between 124 and 144 miles. Price is starting from 24,400. Delivery starting next year. It's going to have three trim levels, and. I couldn't be more bored by Mini, <laughs> really, as a brand. Just, uh, just a little question. Sorry, uh, WLTP range. What is it? What, what does that mean? Explain. Well, they've they've, they've traditionally had a different uh, ch- uh, different ways of measuring range. Um, WLTP is is considered probably the most uh, accurate at the moment. Okay. All right then. All right. So it's it's kind of like a. Um, uh, uh, like a motor industry um, standard yes, way of yeah. measuring. That yeah, of. and uh, for instance, they used to say that my Nissan Leaf would do 155 miles, and uh, if I drove it 15 miles an hour, I probably would. <laughs> All right, okay, right, I'm with so, you. So, yeah, in certain conditions, you can get a heck of a lot more out of a vehicle, and this was kind of the test conditions they were talking about, and it was never real world range, if you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, well, I think we've we seen that even with um, with uh, petrol and diesel cars. You know, it's always in an ideal lab condition. You'll get this many, many hundreds of miles, and it's always. I think you you always got to take it with a pinch of salt. I guess, I'll be honest. You? I'm no I'm no expert on test cycles, and if anyone wants to correct me if I'm wrong, please drop me <laughs> drop me a tweet and <laughs> just tell me, me I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, the nub of it is the way I think of cars is, yeah, you get behind the wheel and you um, you drive it, and you know after a couple of months of ownership, you know what it'll do in what weather. It's almost intuitive, and and with an EV, it gets even more intuitive because you know, you know how to get the most out of it. That is an EV driver thing for sure. <laughs> so, so to buy a new one and to yeah. pay nearly twenty five grand, you think gone gone should be the days of I'm worrying about my range. I want something, if I'm paying my 25 grand for my brand spanking new Mini, you know, I don't want to worry about why we've got such a low range. And, and you know, I wouldn't be the first to say this. Um, you know, Martin Lee has probably said it 10 times if he's said it once. <laughs> They're using old BMW i3 batteries in this thing. Right, so the batteries are already old before... It's not out, and they're even using old batteries, yeah. Okay, I see, right. I, I, can, see, I can see a problem emerging now. So, you know, it's... For me, yeah. I can say Mini doesn't excite me anyway. I don't like the look of it, uh, particularly. It's never done anything for me. I can say there are those that'll, that'll correct me, <laughs> but um, I just... I look at the MG, I think 170 miles low 20s I look at the mini nearly 25 okay three trim levels for I think old tech probably a lower range when it comes down to it I'm definitely in lower range <laughs> yeah I mean for, for me at least looking at the look at the price I mean we're going to sound like a pair of mini bashers if you call us that if you want but uh, but yeah I mean if, if for about the same price maybe uh, slightly off but about the same price you can get the MG which is um, touting tout, you know a bit bigger bigger range and all this kind of stuff but um, why would you go for a car which in my opinion looks a bit ugly when it, you can go for a nicer pretty one at if I was to be price. even <laughs> even more of a nerd about it I mean they're telling me uh, WLTP range 124 to 144 as I said uh, and when charging on 50 kilowatt rapid DC charger 80% top up takes 35 minutes so if they're saying that that's going to charge at 50 kilowatt max again there's going to be cars coming out soon that could charge a heck of a lot quicker than that yeah, it's true. I mean, I think there will be a lot of people who will buy it because it's a Mini, to be fair. There are there are those. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's perfectly fine. You get people that love the Volkswagen Beetle of old, so they'll, they'll carry on buying the new ones and that kind of thing. Uh, so I, I think for the fact that it's a Mini is going to attract a lot of people, not myself, I'll, I'll be honest, but if people like Minis, then it's just going to be another Mini for them to look at to introduce the fact that there is an electric one, which is great. You know, everyone likes advertising EVs. That's, that's whole what, what we're talking about, what we hear about. But if if... 
value for money, if you're bang for bucks a bit rubbish, then then why would you buy one? Yeah, I mean, with with that kind of range, people are going to, I don't know, I just think second car territory, really. That's not going to be a yeah. main car. Yeah, I mean, and also another, another thing that... Uh, um, um, another thing I'm thinking about is that um, the if you look at the the the, the non EV cars, you look at Datchers, the uh, the uh, Nissan Renault. Um, am I allowed to call them budget cars? Yeah. But for yeah. for about the same price, you can get yourself a petrol car that will that will do pretty much what the Mini will do, but it won't it won't run out of range. Well, you know what? You, I think the Zoe is a really smart looking car. Mm. They've got a 50 kilowatt version of that coming out soon. It's supposed to be very competitive. Uh, and the 50 kilowatt will probably do nigh on 240 mile range. And f- we haven't got a price yet, but I don't think it's going to be too far off 25 grand. No, but I, I think Renault probably might be having, um, uh, it might be in their advantage that they haven't got the price out yet. Because if they can see what everyone else is charging, if they can see the Mini is charging, uh, what was it, 24, uh, 24 25 grand, um, it, bring, in, bring on the competition, you know, if they can do more miles for, le- for less money, let's do it. If I was to be picky, I could say, look, You've already got a 40 kilowatt Zoe. That'll do about 160, 170 miles already. And that's definitely going to be cheaper than 25 grand. Mm. You can pick those up for well under 20,000, especially with the battery lease. Yeah, I mean, ignoring the fact that I'm not a massive Mini fan anyway, just looking at the car and the price, I think... For the same amount of money, you could either get yourself, like you've pointed out, the the, the Renault, the Renault Zoe, or you could get yourself a petrol car, which will have, okay, it won't be an EV, but it will have probably a little bit more than, say, the Mini would for the same price. So if you're trying to bring people into the EV world, I think you should price it sensibly as well, really. I just don't see what it gives you, really, and I think you're paying your 25000 for the Mini brand. Yes, well, I was going to, I was going to follow with the, with a similar thing. Saying at the end of the day, you're buying a BMW, and they are renowned for being slightly more expensive than, say, the ordinary uh, cheaper budget cars around. You know, not just EVs, just generally. Um, I think you might have hit the nail on the head there. You're buying a Mini, aren't you? I'm sure it'll be beautifully finished, and it, you know, people will, some people will rave about it. Not for me, but I'm not your classic Mini fan. Again, we'd love to hear your opinions. Um, like I say, we're not mini bashing. It's just our honest opinions, and we appreciate yours. So please get in touch. Yeah, yeah. Please, please let us know. Give a, give a, give Darren a tweet. He loves, he loves getting tweets. To be fair, and you, you see him every so often with his phone in his pocket. I got a message. Oh, I got a message. Brilliant. He, no, he genuinely gets excited when when new people get in touch. So yeah, give, give Darren a little t- uh, a tweet. Go on, make his day. Okay, from 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 a couple of cars that, that we've seen recently to. Um, I just want to talk briefly about uh, Formula E, really, and it's it's something that I haven't really watched a lot of. I'll be, I'll be honest; it always seems to be on a time, and I always forget it. I suppose I can <laughs> download it, but and John, I know you've been a big fan of it for quite a while. Yeah, uh, um, unless it's, I might be the complete opposite to you. I've seen every single race since Race One, Series One, because I'm a huge Formula E nerd. I'll be the first man to say that. But um, yeah, Formula E for the uninitiated is uh, well, obviously. We're, going to be, we're talking about electric cars. It's, um, it's the world's first fully electric uh, motor racing series. And uh, it's basically it's street-based. So instead of driving it around proper race tracks, if you want to call them that, where you get your, tour, your touring cars and your Formula One cars and this kind of thing, they, they, they would literally transform half, a, half an entire city um, and turn the city into a racetrack so people can see the cars on the roads. Um, but also it makes for, for better racing from the racing nerds um, uh, point of view it could make it better could make it worse anyway i love it but what what's uh, what i do like about the formula e cars is that um five years ago or just over five years ago uh, the first uh, season one formula a uh, formula e race started and the cars basically look like for those of you who know your racing cars they look a bit like formula twos formula threes that kind of thing so very generic looking race cars but they all had um they were batteries um, the, 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 now the unique thing about it was it was still a very new racing series and without milking it too much and it's trying to explain um, everything to you they had two cars because the batteries were too small they couldn't last a whole race but right, so. but they wanted to have a racing series so what did they do uh, they well they they made the drivers pit halfway through the race jump out of one car jump into another get belted up and carried on which sounds absolutely obscene but it was brilliant but anyway Give it another three years down the road. Battery technology, based on nearly all all of its uh, down to the uh, Formula E racing, but the battery technology has improved so much. Um, they had um, um, 
Williams supplied batteries, I think, for the first lot. They're using McLaren supplied batteries now. Um, but uh, that's not to say one manufacturer is better than the other. Technology evolves, all down to the research of Formula E. And now, because of it, you have, in the way you go and watch your motor racing on telly, that kind of thing, your Formula One, uh, your touring cars, whatever it is you watch, your W Series, you've got exactly the same kind of thing, but in fully electric cars. And they look awesome as well. I have to admit, I was... Um as I say, I don't really watch. I've watched the odd thing. But the one I watched the weekend, the final one in the series, it was, uh, um, you know, there was a real sort of atmosphere before the race. And I thought, oh, there's Vernon Kay. They keep, <laughs> they're keeping him in a job. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's strange, isn't it? I, I mean, um, the, the Formula E, bless it, because it's new, I think a lot of TV, uh, big TV organisations are not really... They're not willing to take it on full time and grab it by the horns and throw it onto prime time telly. Um, so it's been jumping around from channel to channel. But Vernon Kay came along. Um, I'm, I'm digressing slightly from the car's view now, uh, the car side of things. But Vernon Kay came along when Channel 5 had coverage. And they did a superb job. Channel 5 is not everyone's first uh, channel of... Uh, of, uh, of choice when you think oh what's what, what, what's channels of sport on you wouldn't think channel 5 anyway they absolutely nailed it um, and Formula E themselves the organisation uh, employed Vernon Kay to do the whole next series because he did such a great job and this kind of brings the whole the whole circus together in that you've got your television side you've got your travelling circus of all the race race cars travelling around the world they're putting it in cities literally closing half of a city and turning it into a racetrack where that they are working really hard to just push the word out. You've got your TV, you've got your, your disruption, if you want to call it. But it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You, you must have seen an electric uh, car or a Formula E car at some point in your life, whether it be on telly or otherwise. They're really pushing it hard. And I'll tell you what, yes, I'm a bit of an EV nerd. Not quite to the level of, every, of, a, of other people, but I enjoy it. But as a racing series and also as a, um, an advertisement for electric cars, Full marks, ten out of ten. I really like the the elements they they bring into it as well. The um, the fan boost. Yeah, it's a bit interesting. Um, the fan boost. Um, uh, do, you, do you want to tell people what it is, or uh, is it entirely to you? Well, from what I want, <laughs> my limited understanding, John, correct if I'm wrong, is you can actually vote for the, the driver on Twitter, and it, the driver that gets the greatest number of votes gets a portion of their battery and locked towards at the top five yes, drivers. I think it's an, e- an extra, I think it was an extra t- extra 25 kilowatts or something. I can't remember the figures. You know, I'm supposed to know everything about this and you put it in front of a microphone, I've forgotten it all. <laughs> but yes, the, the fan boost is where you can vote for your favourite driver and the uh, the top five drivers um, all get a bit of a, a boost and they push a button and they've got a short amount of time to use that boost power. So you can save it for an overtake or for catching up. It's very stra- um, stra- stra- strategic. <laughs> There's a hell of a lot of strategy in it. It's exciting to watch. And it's a great advertisement for, for, for racing and uh, for electric racing, to but be fair. What was new to me um, and new to this season, I believe, was the little, the other boost, the activator. What uh, did they call yes, that? Yes, they call it attack mode. Attack uh, mode, right. Yeah. For those who know Formula E and, uh, and racing as well, uh, Jean-Éric Verne, he's, a, he's a, a French racing driver. And he's, he's a little bit of a legend, to be honest. He, he used to race uh, for Toro Rosso when he was in Formula One. They didn't keep him for very long, but uh, he jumped into Formula E and he's made it his own. And he's become a little bit of a celebrity in the Formula E world. And he ended up calling it, um, oh, so we, we've, we've kind of got Mario Kart this year, he said. In his words, he <laughs> described it Mario Kart. Because the idea is that you drive over a little patch on the road, which is, um, you know, you've got your, your little, call it a, Fast lane, if you want. And when you drive down like this little fast red lane... Red chevron thing. Yeah, it's, it's the equivalent of picking up a red mushroom in Mario Kart, if you know <laughs> Mario Kart. It will give you a boost, and you can use it up to four times during the race, and it's, it's bonkers. But it works. It's superb, because you get cars that overtake when you don't expect it to. And I know I'm talking more probably about the racing than the actual uh, electric car element of it, but... But they're doing, like, I'll bring it back to my original point, they're doing so much to make it interesting for people to watch and to but join in. the whole point of this, those two modes, you couldn't do that in a petrol car. You can't nah. just say, I know, well, let's just unlock another <laughs> 25% in the petrol tank for you. Yeah, I mean, you, the closest comparison is for, for Formula One, you have DRS, where at certain points of the track, if you're close enough to the car in front, you push a button on your, on your steering wheel and your back wing opens up, lets more air flow through so there's less resistance, you get a boost. And I guess it's the equivalent of that. Um, so from a racing perspective, it does kind of fill a gap. But like you say, for a petrol car, unless you're messing around with wings and, and, and 
buttons and all kinds of stuff. You can't do it in a, in a fuel car, in a petrol fuel car, can you? No, and I just what a great advert for EVs, you know. That's absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's um, I mean, I'll, I'll give it a bit of a plug. It's it's uh, its official title is the ABB FIA Formula E Championship. It's a bit long winded, but just look up Formula E on Google, you'll find it. But it's um, it's brilliant. Just just watch the videos, and if you can watch the last two races of the series just finished, an excellent advertisement for what what a city can do to turn it into a racetrack for a weekend. Brilliant, fantastic, yeah. Just wanted to mention a couple of events that are coming up. Um, both of which all being well, fingers crossed. As ambassador to Yorkshire for the Yorkshire EV Club, I should be going to both of them. Um, so the first one is <clears throat> imminent. Um, not quite sure what date this podcast is going out, So, but I'm hoping it'll go out before this event, but I'll mention it anyway. Um, I believe it's the first event of its kind. It's at the British Motor Museum and in Gaydon. Sorry, I was just oh, checking yeah, no, checking no. the name of the village there. Yeah, 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 yeah that is right. It's, it's, it's uh, not far from, actually, from Silverstone, where all the racetracks are and that kind of thing, have it? So, yeah, they, they call it the EV Electric Vehicles Festival. And all credit to Paul Middlecott, who has been absolutely annihilating social media with news of this event. He's so excited such a positive promoter this guy i'm really impressed by what he's been doing you know i i wish i had him working for our club and yeah because brilliant he's been all over the place with this so you could not fail to miss it if you're in the ev world if you're not get yourself to gaiden on july the 28th joy you know it looks it does look brilliant it does look, i'm just looking at the photograph of this little uh, press release that you've uh, you printed out for us i have no idea what this little car is it's a tiny little car it's it looks like a cross between the front of a renault 5 and the back of a fiat 500 with two seats in you know i'm not sure it <laughs> might be a g whiz but i really can't tell i think it's older than that actually oh yeah i mean look at the yeah. number it's, it's a stonking old car i mean yeah. talking like 70s 80s but is imagine that going electric brilliant but yeah, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? <laughs> so, uh, the, the like I said, the event is the EV Electric Vehicles Festival, British Motor Museum in Gaydon. Um, if you want to catch Paul on Twitter, I believe that's at New Technology Y2. Um, really, really affordable event. This adults just ten pound. Um, children seven pound. Under fives free. Concessions ten pound. Um, really good value event. Go and show your support. I know he's got lots of people in the EV community involved. It's going to be massive. Absolutely massive. Sounds brilliant. And speaking of massive, um, one of the biggies of the year for your EV calendar, your EV social calendar, is the EVs in the park event. Yes, I went to one of these last year. Uh, Coventry. I believe it was, wasn't it? Was it outside Coventry? That's yeah. right. It's same venue, same venue, same venue. Oh, brilliant! Excellent venue. So it's, that's the War Memorial Park, Kenilworth Road, in Coventry. It is, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know what? I I, uh, I had a great time. I think it's probably one of the first EV events I've been to. Um, so yeah, thank you for driving me there, uh, there, Darren, in your in your electric car, no less. <laughs> um, but yes, absolutely brilliant. It's um, it's it's. I don't know how to describe it. It's it's the biggest collection of EV cars with EV owners that I've ever seen in one place. Um, what more, what more can I say? You can talk to everybody. You've got stands there. You've got people to talk to. Craig Tong, who runs the uh, the Reynolds Zoe Club, he organised that, and amongst lots of others as well, I'm sure. But uh, brilliant job. That was my first event, and that event has just grown and grown and grown. I don't think they knew what to expect in terms of numbers last year, but there's something like 100 EVs there, and it was huge. And one of the best things about this event is totally free. So I'll just give you the detail. 24th of August... 10.30 to 4.30. Location is the War Memorial Park, Kenilworth Road and Coventry, CV3 6PT. Um, cost is free. Oh. Um, park in your EV, you have to get a ticket from Eventbrite online. Um, but um, EVs in the park have got a really good website, uh, which is evitp.co.uk or on Twitter, at EVs in the park. I understand that by now, the EV parking tickets are probably just about gone, so you'll have to be quick. Um, but there's lots of other parking around there, so you don't have to be parked with the EVs. It's, if the weather's nice, it's a lovely park. There will be 
everybody there, all the social, all the YouTube people that, that you watch. Just going to be a fab event. I thought it was brilliant. Last time we went, we were really lucky with the weather. It was a lovely day. And uh, there were people there bringing out portable barbecues, just sat in between all these cars. It's, you imagine the world's, the world's biggest EV car park on a, on a lovely big grass, uh, grass green field. And there were just people sat in between cars with, with portable barbecues. It's and just brilliant. There was a guy there with a Tesla, and he got his Model S, and he got his boot up, <laughs> and he created like a little awning out of his boot. And I just oh, thought, it, oh, it was excellent. It's a, I, I'm regretting not taking as many photos as I wish I had. Yes, it, was, it turned literally converted the whole of the back of his uh, his Tesla into if you imagine what they do with camper vans massive great awnings out the side of that he did that with the boot of his Tesla and it looked it looked part of it it looked superb proper so, camping car so those two events are are, are must go to's really and Absolutely. I intend to go to both um, so that's that um, so um, that pretty much wraps it up for today we've been waffling on for a while um, this is our first podcast we hope to do more I just want to just want to go over a few things before before we wrap up. You can get hold of me, as I say on Twitter, it's at Whole Leaf Guy. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please let me know. We intend to do more. I intend to bring you other guests, conversation. If you want to be involved, if you want to be a guest, please get in touch. And uh, and we you know we can we can have some fun. Your opinion. We intend for this to be a conversational, fun podcast, not too serious. We can have a laugh. You know, but we're interested in EVs. Any sustain, anything, any message you want to bring to us, you know, we'll consider it. And uh, I just want to thank um, Hull Kingston Radio Station who have allowed me to record on their equipment, and uh, and uh, Mr. John Gibbons, who's my technical expert, shall we say? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm pushing a few buttons. No, you're welcome. Thanks for having me here. So until next time, folks. Happy motoring. Ciao for now.